Blinded by fashion. Blinded by fashion. The fashionista. Hey, and welcome to all of you. And now I'm going to introduce my fabulous special guest, the gorgeous woman in lavender, whose name is Valerie. And um, just a little background, I'm sure you read in the invitation and in the post that (laughs) Valerie and I go way back, excuse me. I'll just give you a brief summary. We met in New York the first time when Valerie was about 16 and I was about 16 and I was about 18 or 19. (laughs) Then we met up again. (laughs) <laughs> what's that just yesterday just yesterday and then we met again in milan and she was living in one place and i was living in another but we became roommates and we were thick as thieves from mm-hmm. the day forward and i mean we shared everything clothes makeup pots and pans and boyfriends <laughs> <laughs> until uh, we were living and we lived in milan and then uh, you lived in Munich, Valerie, and I came and stayed with you in Munich, and then she would come stay with me in Paris, and then eventually she moved to Paris. We became roommates there. Then we traveled to Japan together. We traveled around the world together, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and after all of that was when the two terror twins showed up at our door, mm-hmm. and I had to beg Valerie to join me to take <laughs> these guys out for dinner. Yeah. Because Valerie had to uh, to do a, um, she was taking uh, was it Stanislavski acting? No, it was yeah, yeah, no, it was Strasbourg, and I had an Strasbourg. audition. Day, yeah. She had an audition or something she had to uh, prepare for, and I talked her out of it and made her come with me. <laughs> and uh, those guys showed up, and I remember when we kicked them out at the end of the night, which they were kind of surprised that we weren't letting them stay. We called them a cab and they, I closed the door and I go, oh, Valerie, I'm in love. And she goes, <laughs> so am I. And I said, uh-oh, which one? And she goes, Phil. And I said, oh, thank God, because I'm in love with you. <laughs> and, uh, and then that began us, the fabulous foursome that yeah. we, did. we did a lot of traveling together and s- 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 sleeping together only because we had to in the back of a car. Yes. And no, also- yeah. You want to say something about the night we slept yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was Easter time and we thought it was brilliant that we were going to drive down to Deauville, France. And guess what? There was nowhere to stay. So we slept in the back of this hatchback car. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the morning, got like up sardines. We, we were like sardines. Oh, we were so skinny, all of us. Yes. And Steve had a horrible nightmare. Remember that? And he like shut yeah. up, banged his head to the top of the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I want to go close the door. Hang on. Only things you can do when you're really young. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. We're now. now. <laughs> but anyway, so all of this time we were modeling and working and yep. uh, being very responsible, young 20 something girls. And uh, here we are now, all these years later. Yeah. And uh, life has changed. We have different partners, obviously. And so luckily, uh, Valerie has a lot of expertise on the subject of plastic surgery, being married to Dr. Tornambi. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only has Valerie um, been there to witness all of the patients that have come out the other side of uh, these surgeries, but she's also been there under the knife herself. So Valerie, I'm going to let you take it for myself. (laughs) I'm going to let you tell us uh, you you have a bullet list of things that we want to talk about. And at the end, girls, you know, you can raise your hand in the chat if you have a question or you can type it in. Cindy, our social mistress over here with the green beret, will uh, let us know when you want to or be able to answer or whatever. So there will be time for Q&A. But if you think of something on the way, just pop it into Cindy and maybe Cindy will text me. I don't know if I need to know something. OK. Yeah. Sounds great. So, yeah. So, as Laurel, I said, I have been actually married to Dr. Trinambi, Bob, or Dr. Bob, <laughs> you can also call him, uh, for what seems like 100 years. We've been together for 27 years, a long time. So, you learn an enormous amount by osmosis. The running joke is my degree is AAD, almost a doctor, <laughs> just because of all the things 
that I've seen, that you hear. And just even sometimes being in the background listening when they go on their conferences, their journal groups, da, 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 and you're hearing all other plastic surgeons come back with what their procedures have been, what's good, what's bad, what complications they had. So it's just an enormous amount of info load that goes in. That being said, no plastic, nobody has to have plastic surgery. I mean, this is unless you have a horrible accident. This, when you're doing anything for cosmetic purposes, this is all by choice. It's elective. So, and surgery is surgery, you know. Um, there are always potential complications. They are rare, but, and sometimes they're very small, but things can happen. That being said, I have been under the knife and injected. <laughs> so I can speak from my personal experience as well as having friends that have been operated on and uh, what I would say are regular patients, if you want to call them that. So if you want to start with talking about facelifts, um, they're mini and they're full. I have had a mini facelift, what some people would call a lower facelift. It's really, it's known as a mini, okay? Which means that you're basically lifting from here up. You're not, you're not including the forehead in that. So it's, it is much less invasive. It's generally about a two week full recovery. I mean, I was out in about six days later. Um, your incisions, Go all up in here around your ear and down there. So, okay, so okay. Uh, wait, Valerie, come closer now, like that, so that okay. we can see like that. So, if okay. you can see, actually, I don't know if you can see, I do have some, it's a little more on that side than the other side. And I don't think you really can see anything behind my ears, quite frankly, at this point. Maybe you can. I don't really know anybody who's looking back there. <laughs> so, that's another thing. <laughs> Maybe the new dog, you know. Um, so uh, that being said, depending upon how much you bruise is a factor in anything that you do, I tend to be a bruiser. I didn't bruise horribly uh, with my facelift. He had done my eyes. There are videos. I did do a series of videos of recovery that you can access and see about. Wait, wait. Val, Val, let me go back. So you said he had done your eyes. So what happened? You did eyes. When you say done my eyes, did you do okay. that before so the mini? And what does that mean, done yeah. my eyes? So when I did my facelift, he also did what was called a lower blepharoplasty, your lower eyes. I didn't at that time, this is now two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, I didn't do my upper eyes, okay? There's an upper bleph and a lower bleph. I did do an upper bleph about seven months ago, which was fabulous. But so did, did my lower face, mini facelift and the eyes at the same time. So my main bruising was really here and it wasn't horrible. And he also lipoed a bit and lifted. Your neck gets done in that too. It's a natural pickup when they do it. So I did have bruising here because he had lipoed right under there in my chin. Um, but as I said- so Wait, okay, stop for a sec. So when they do the mini, and 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 that's, this is the thing that bugs me. So I have yeah. these jowls, right? right? So let's pretend I got a mini. And I mean, I'm fine for now, but let's just say- so it lifts this so that you lose the jowls, right? So you, you lose the jowls and it will redefine the jawline. Redefines the jaw. And it also lifts your neck. Is that it? Or is that a separate deal? So yeah. Now, if your neck is in, I would, for lack of a better term, say bad shape, then yeah, you'd have to lift the neck separately. But if it's minimal, and my neck was needed it, as my dear husband said to me, he goes, wow, your neck really needed it. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> you know, I love you too. But um, yeah, so there is a natural pull on that right there. But the the wonderful thing is the redefining of the jawline because I did have jowls there. That was the biggest, that was one of the biggest things for me over there. Yeah, right, right exactly. Yeah. Um, so well, wait, I mean, so wait, wait, let me ask what? another question. So you had the under eyes done, but why didn't you just do all of it at once? Like what You certainly you can. It didn't seem that I really needed it. I didn't need my uppers done at that time. Couple you of didn't years. need anything done, but well, let's, come I, on. I need a help, you know. And I mean, when you're married to Rome, what the heck? So, <laughs> but it took a long time for him to acquiesce to it. So basically, this was my 60th birthday gift, if you will. Okay. Uh, um, and his, his joke says, he goes, now I know why in medical school they teach you and they tell you never to sleep with your patients. He goes, because, oh my God, she was a pain. I really wasn't a pain at all. He just likes to tell people that. <laughs> I don't know. Does Darcy have something to say about that or? 
Uh, Paola? Yeah, not yet. We're no, just, we're no, just fascinated no, we have nothing listening. To say. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, because they know him. So. Yeah. Oh, God. But as I okay. said, so wait, now Go going on. back. So now you talked about the mini, you talked about the chin and the yep. neck. And then you talked about the under eyes and you talked about now going back to, and now why did you do that? Were you getting heavy lids? The, I was getting, what I had was skin here. So it wasn't horribly heavy, but there was extra skin in here. You might, I don't know. I mean, I have makeup on. My scars there are very, very faint. I don't know if you can see them through. It's like really in the crease of the eye. Come closer, come closer. I don't know if you can see them. No, you can't see them. They they were, you know, they took probably, I would say about three, they were pretty red for about four months. And then they just started to fade and fade. And if I have no makeup on, you see like a little faint pink, but it's, you know. Um, Not a big deal. It was, I had wished actually I had done it at the time. He's like, well, you didn't need it at the time. Doing your upper eyes, upper bluff is actually an easier recovery than the lower um meaning just a bit shorter recovery uh it was really that was pretty much a no-brainer that also can be done under a local depending upon how much skin there is if there's a lot of skin and they're going to give you a general anesthesia but um i didn't want to be awake so <laughs> no, <I'll> be. <laughs> knock me out you know just knock me out um, so question another question okay yeah. so everything so from your eyebrows to to your to your neck yeah you've had done i've had done i've had filler in here i have filler. Okay, let's in talk here. about the filler let's go to filler wait, okay, we... so question wait one <laughs> question about so if a woman isn't ready to go under the knife yep and she's having is you know she would like to look fresher and, and you know younger yeah how would can are fillers an option substitute on the way to getting to that place they where... can so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about fillers and Botox together because those are your non-invasives. Mm -hmm. um, Botox, pretty common thing to do. Botox is basically for fine lines and wrinkles. Generally, depending upon one's facial structure, the common thing you'll see is these, you'll get the two lines here. Those are called the 11s. Um, and they come, literally they are the 11s. Um, it, you know, depending upon how deep they are on some people, that's going to equal how many units of Botox you would need in that area, okay? Common is also doing the forehead, crow's feet. Um, it's not done in here. It's not done under the eyes. You will find some people that will do that or suggest putting filler under eyes. Um, Dr. T will not do that. One of the main reasons is there is a small risk of blindness and it's immediate blindness. So he was not, won't touch that and it's not necessary. But, um, you know, the bottom line is you have to be careful when you're out shopping because if you, you can go around and you'll find the answer that you want from someone. It doesn't mean that it's the right answer for you. That's something you have to be very, very aware of. And I'll just digress for a bit too make sure that you have a board certified plastic surgeon. Be very, very careful when people are saying that they're cosmetic surgeons. You wanna know what exactly that means. Anybody who is an MD can practice under the moniker of a cosmetic surgeon. Sometimes those are OBGYNs. Sometimes those could be ear, nose and throat. That could be anything. And they take weekend courses and things like liposuction and then they go out and perform it. And Oftentimes, this is when you hear about horrific, horrific complications that can happen. Uh, so you really need to know you have a board certified plastic surgeon. Dermatologists will do a lot of surgery. Um, they shouldn't be doing a lot of what they're doing. They are fine to do fillers. They are fine to do Botox. Some are fine to do leparoplasties, but you're generally going to be, it's a no brainer. You need a board certified plastic surgeon. That's what it boils down to. Well, yeah. let me just say, I mean, you're you're talking about your face here. So why wouldn't you want the best? I mean, sometimes people just don't realize what a cosmetic surgeon is. It's really, really common. 
So there's a difference between a cosmetic surgeon and a plastic surgeon. Is that absolutely what I mean? PMD can take a course and call themselves a cosmetic surgeon. Oh, that's really interesting. As I said, you can have, you could be an ENT, you could be a gynecologist, you could be. Well, yes. As a matter of fact, Melissa just told me today that this gynecologist I've been trying to get into for my HRT, she's fully booked because now she's doing this. Right, Melissa? Crazy. Yeah. So anyway, now I can't, she's not even doing OBGYN that much because she can make more money doing this. Okay, yeah, but she's not a trained, well, I, you know, it depends what she's doing. If she's operating, she's not, she never trained for that type of surgery. Right. You know? So you well, do have to very She careful. delivers babies and she does C-sections, but it, again, it's a different thing. She's not trained in a two-year residency of plastic surgery, excuse me, four-year residency of plastic surgery. Right. She went through she's... an obstetrician think... residency, which is entirely different. I think she's only doing injections and Botox kind of stuff. Yeah, everybody, just, everybody and their mother is doing injections. Dentists are doing injections. Everybody's exactly. doing, you know, but um, just because a dentist can give you a needle, needle and Novocaine doesn't mean that they should be putting Botox in your face. Totally agree. Totally agree. But people will do anything for money. So. All right, well, I, have, I, have, I have, okay, I have, a, okay, if you um, want to say something, Melissa, um, just raise, there's a chat thing where you can raise your Oh, I, I put my hand, I, I just wrote it in the, in the chat oh, and I just oh, asked her instead. Okay, sorry. I just Hillary. wanted to ask Valerie what her husband does because I had my eyes done and they did, I did the under because I had really big puffy eyes, under eyes. And mm -hmm. then they did a laser treatment mm -hmm. underneath it to tighten the skin. Yeah. And that was my longest recovery because it took, I'm really fair skin and it probably took a good five to six months yeah. before I, I was not really pink. Right. Yeah. Lasers, lasers are fabulous, but you know, what you're doing is burning off a solid layer of skin in order to access the new, um, generally pinker light, uh, fleshier skin below. So, you know, and, and one does again, if you're getting laser, be very, very careful because you're, someone's dealing with a controlled burn. Literally, that's what it is. So um, that does take a while to heal, especially if you're a fair skinned female or male. Is, is that what he uses though, to tighten the skin again? So, cause you know, once they take that fat pad out, you got extra skin. If, if needed, if it's needed, he'll do it. You know, generally he doesn't, when you have, if you really have a, an under eye bag, they do what they call unpacking the bags. And what they're doing literally is just taking, it's a, it's a little thing of fat that, you know, gets compressed and they literally pull that thing of fat out. And then they usually just tighten it up with some stitches. But if someone really needs laser under there and would benefit, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it really depends upon what your needs are in, and you know, everybody's just got different needs within the face, even though these are the same procedures, some need more, some need less, some need a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And that's where you talk to your surgeon. Uh, Valerie. Okay. So from the eyebrows down, we talked about now, do you need, or will you in the future need to go and do a lift up here? Talk about the, 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 the full. If I want to, I mean, yeah, right now, because <clears throat> I have had my uppers done and I do do Botox all here. And you know, when he Botoxes me and I get quite a lot of Botox, I'll get 70, 80 units of Botox, which is a good shot. You know, I mean, good. It's a lot of shots, but a good amount. What he'll do is he Botoxes me all up in here. Okay. He'll do this few things there. And then along the top of the eyebrows right here, which lifts the eyebrows as well right. a bit. So it really does just lift all that up. So you, you don't know, need um, so so you don't need uh, to no, do. It, and I but. don't need that yet, and maybe I won't. You know, I may not do it. I don't know, but I, I'm not there yet. Thank God. <laughs> now I have a question. Yeah, you were talking about the differences between you know, and because what we're really here, the point of this conversation is whether or not you're going to have plus, not just whether or not you're going to do these these things, but how to do them in a beautiful way. In other words, I really believe in enhancing your beauty, not mm -hmm. trying to change it. And, and there a lot of mistakes can be made. And you made a point of saying that, make sure you go to a board pl uh, certified plastic surgeon, not just a cosmetic surgeon. And mm -hmm. what about, what advice do you have for, uh, you know, like there are people, there are Groupon. Oh yeah. 
I can address that. <laughs> I would like for you to talk about that. Generally, what happens with Groupons and super, super sales, um, Medispas, things like that. Um, okay, so say Medispa in and of itself. The Botox is essentially watered down. So they will offer you more units of Botox at a lesser price because the Botox is, it's diluted. And that's how they're, they're, they're metering it out. So they'll sell you X amount of units at X amount of price, but you're, you're just, get, you're still getting Botox. It's just not going to last as long. You know, it's not going to last as long. And you feel like you're getting a deal and you'll be back there. And again, you know, the situation with a medi spa is that they'll have sometimes it's nurse practitioners or estheticians that are injecting you. By law, I know in New York state and things can vary state by state, there needs to be a doctor technically on site. There often is not. There just is an MD that will come in and oversee the facility and then leave. And then everybody gets their, you know, the, the nurse practitioners or the estheticians do their thing. So again, you know, there's, there's a lot of wild west of plastic surgery that you really need to be careful about. Yes. And also because, you know, you see, and I'm all about lip enhancements and, and yeah. you know, cheek, you know, cheek uh, injections and all that to, to sort of plump things up. But yeah. I really think that there's a difference between somebody who has it done and she just looks better. And then the ones who end up with the lips that you can tell, they, yeah. it's like, if you're going to do this thing, do it in a graceful way so that it looks, it, you look better. Not that you look like you had your lips done or your cheek, you know, whatever. It's like they overdo it. Yeah. And I think that that yeah. happens. Sorry. Some people want to look that way. That's what's interesting. Some people want an over enhanced look that, that is obviously personal choice. It also changes region by region. I mean, generally speaking, LA, and greater Los Angeles pull tight, literally pull tighter on facelifts than New York does. Um, that being said, you'll see your New York Madison Avenue ladies walking around like that, um, <laughs> but it's generally just a different style. It is, it's just a different style of plastic surgery, you know? And there are people that wanna have these big fish lips, you know? Um, Dr. T won't do that. That's not, he doesn't agree in doing that. He's like, because it's, you know, he doesn't want that walking around as something that he did, you know? Yeah. But, you know, to each his own, I personally agree. That would not be the aesthetic that I would want for me or friends or patients or any, you know, it's not what my eye appreciates. Well, um, hang on. Somebody Wait. has their hand up. ACM. Hi, it's me, Adrian. Hi, hon. Hi, Adrian. We didn't get to meet you. Where are you from? Well, I'm, uh, that's a long story, but I live in Manhattan. Oh, so you're a friend of Valerie's? Yes, I am. And, nice um, to you, <laughs> and I, I'm looking like this today. That's why I'm, I've muted my camera. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. Hiding, it's... hiding like this. Hi. <laughs> lovely. Stop it. Uh, no, anyway. Um, so I was just going to have a little laugh. You know, you say that, um, we see ladies walking around Madison Avenue like this, but if you talk, if you over, if, if you listen, like, cause you know, we're, we're all thinking about plastic surgery all the time and what we could be doing better. And we're all seeing the lines and, you know, what do I need to be doing next? And I'm convinced I'm shocked. And I'm, I'm entertained by the fact that they do them differently on each coast. Mm -hmm. And um, if you listen in to, you know, if you're at BG cafe or one of these other kind of girly places to have lunch, you don't know where these ladies are getting it done. You know, like, so the ladies on Madison Avenue, and I'm just wondering, Valerie, does one coast influence the other? Like, does one lead the trend? Are we heading towards this? Or do they um, just I, not, polarize? Not, not particularly, no. It's really, it's, it's more in the overall of what, you know, celebrity culture and model culture and that kind of thing. It's really a bit more of the ominous level of what, what leads it and what becomes more popular you know, that then people start requesting those procedures, you know, or they see a friend's got something done and they like, oh, I want to go do that. Who did you go to? Or I'm going to go blah, blah, blah. It's that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's, it's truly local trend. Yeah, pretty much, you know, but That's it's influenced by, by, by culture. Yeah. You know, well, so. let me, let me, let me say something about that. <laughs> I think that Valerie's right. In a way it's fashion. Yeah. So what's happening in fashion and what, 
what's happening in fashion and that the whole lip thing happened because of Angelina Jolie, let's face it. Really? Probably. It's, I mean, we're definitely one of the big, you know, big faces, if you will, of that. And, you know, her lips are hers. <laughs> I hate to disappoint people, but those <laughs> are hers, you know. You can see pictures of her as a kid and she had these really big, big plump lips, you know. But, so, but yeah. it, when she became so famous, uh, so mm. many people wanted oh, yeah. to have that, what she had. And and that thus began the trend of plumping lips and that, but there's a way to do it yeah. where you can, if you're going to get the injections, you, you want them to look like rosebuds plumping, not like beer cans. <laughs> <laughs> you've seen those you know? my one of my things that i say especially like if, if you know if when bob and i are just out together or whatever you, you can't help but no plastic surgery everywhere it's like you know yeah we can't um <laughs> ideally it it where whatever it part of the body is you know now since we're talking about face face shouldn't walk into the room before you do <laughs> let's put it that way you know <laughs> Where someone walks in and you're just like, whoa, you know, look at those lips or wow, man, it's like she's tight. <laughs> yeah. Or look at the size of those breasts, you know, <laughs> or the size of that butt, because, you know, we can talk about Brazilian butt lip. Um, yeah, there is there's a lot of that. So then, you know, personal stuff that it shouldn't walk in the room before you. <laughs> That's hysterical. That is so funny, Valerie. I love your sense of humor. So that said, that said, now that we've pretty much covered the face, right? Yeah. And now let's move on to other. We could go right down to boobs. I mean, we could just go right down the body. Yeah. Okay. Let's move. Move on south. Yeah. So breast, boobs, breast augmentation. Um, again, that, and also in there, we could talk about breast lift. Because some people just need a lift. They don't need an augmentation. Some people need both. Especially, we'll talk about, say, after one has had children and especially breastfed. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens is the breasts deflate um, and they become oftentimes what they call pancake breasts. So they just sit flatter. Now, depending upon the shape and the size of the natural breast, uh, sometimes a lift is just needed. So now, and there are scars with a lift, but people are usually very happy and they literally just cut and lift those breasts back up. There is the option, to, if one wants at that point, to put something of an implant in to give it a little more volume. And we're not talking about making big boobs. We're talking about just trying to get your natural, what was before, shape back. Um, if someone chooses they want to have a, a breast implant and augmentation just because, you know, you have to some people really want to go way bigger than they should and then you have to sort of talk them off the ledge on that depending upon how much natural fat they have going on up here and in the breast um because they they can just look very you'll see the implant <laughs> and they can get what's called encapsulated which means scar tissue starts growing around them and they become hard uh that can happen whether it's a saline or a silicone implant that being said um so you'd want to err on the side of not huge if you're starting out with not big boobs to, to begin with. Um, and you want to keep a natural look. Some people want to get really, really big. And, you know, he has done ones where he's gone in with bigger implants than he would have chosen. But he said, listen, I'm just telling you now, this is not what I suggested to you. I think that you're choosing something too big if they're being really adamant. You know, sometimes they acquiesce and say, all right, we'll take the small one. You know, yeah. Uh, so... There is a lot of things that they don't tell you when you do this. And I'm, I'll am i I'll be uh, straight out with talking about plastic surgery and fashion. So a uh, couple of things I want to say about that. When I was in my 20s, I had hardly any boobs at all. I mean, I just had like really, I wasn't even a double, I guess I was a double A or something like that. And I remember, and the designers liked it because they actually mm -hmm. were gay and they actually really wanted you to look more like a boy than a girl when it came to the body. But 
then all of a sudden, I, do you remember in Paris towards the end of the eighties, there was that one plastic surgery surgeon and he was at all the fashion shows and pretty soon all the girls started getting boobs, but he wasn't doing really big boobs. He was doing boobs that gave flat girls the exact measurement that she needed to match her hips. So he right. was kind of like a, a, a haute couture a plastic surgeon at the way. And I remember um, a couple of my girls, Danae, the girl from South Africa, and there was mm -hmm. some girls getting it. And it was, after, it was after Steve died and I was feeling really lousy about myself and I was very sad and brokenhearted. And I went to him and I got my boobs done. Mm -hmm. And I just got small, like I'm just like a B, maybe almost a C so that I had those perfect measurements. Mm -hmm. And my experience with that was when I came back to New York and I got in front of Bob Mackey, he's like, what did you do to your boobs? Like he loved me the way I was. Yeah. He continued to use me, but he didn't love me as much. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward. So here I am with these boobs. And then I come and I visit you in New York, and I think it was around 2009 or 10. Yeah, it was 9, 10 in there. And I remember saying to you, my boobs feeling hard, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so Dr. T said, oh, and you said to me at that time, oh, you're supposed to replace those every 10 years. I'm well, good. nobody ever told me that. Well, that's your shame on them. I mean, I will say this, and I'm just giving him the shout out. He always tells breast augmentation patients, you're signing up for two surgeries here. You're signing up to augment your breasts and you're going to sign up with whomever, if it's not me, to change them out in 10 to 15 years. Yeah. And people often will leave them in with no complications or no hardening. Sometimes people come in, it's 20, 25 years, but it's like, you need to change those puppies out. Yeah, you do. Especially if they're silicone, because what will happen is they, that's when they can start to leak. Pregnancy. Yeah, absolutely. And you had two pregnancies. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why it's important to know it's two surgeries. There's going to be a change out down the line, which is very, it's actually a, not a difficult surgery at all because you already have the pocket in there from the implant. Sometimes you choose to take them out and leave them out. Not everybody chooses to put a, a, another implant back in and they might just do a little lift. So that's also an option. But either way, that's two surgeries. Uh, I see Jana on the screen, but let me say Darcy, Bacola, can you mute? Because we can hear you talking in the background. Oh, how, do you mute? how do you mute? I know how to. Wait, no, no, Unless you want to speak, that's okay. We'll yeah. figure it out. Uh, it's the bottom left corner. There's a little microphone. It the says. Microphone. I got it. Right. Great, great, great. Now, uh, okay, before we keep moving, anybody want to ask a question or say something here oh. about boobs? Okay. Everybody's so, happy. Uh, Great. <laughs> how about reduction? Oh, redu gr great question. Okay. <laughs> right off the bat, breast reduction patients, always the happiest and most lovely people to do it after the surgery because they are just so relieved. Uh -huh. um, you know, women with really large breasts, and I cannot tell you, I mean, I, I, I had an idea of now all these years later seeing this, you cannot imagine how many different kinds of breasts that there are on the planet. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. It, it's almost like a bloody thumbprint, you know? I mean, it's really, and some women are really cursed. I mean, it, it, you, your heart breaks. Not only are they sometimes incredibly big, they go all the way down. I mean, I've seen wow. breasts that go down to their pubic bone. Wow. Um, and it's just, whoa, you know? So breast reduction always carries with it a fair amount of scarring. What happens is there's, I'll try to stand. They, they're going to cut over here and they cut here. So it's like a T-scar is what they call it. Um, and they actually lift it all up and they take out some of the fat because it's mainly tissue and fat is what your breast is made up of, which you probably know. Um, so those scars are generally fairly marked. They, you know, they fade, but they never go away. No breast reduction patient ever cares. They are so happy after because of the literal weight off their shoulders and their back. They often have grooves in their shoulders from the bra 
years of it digging in it's it's incredible and the and a lot of back pain so when they're relieved of that and they just feel so much lighter as i said they are just generally the happiest people on the planet you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but on that you know what i'll touch on too nobody's asked if anybody's interested because people love the idea of non-invasive procedures and stuff but they worry about anesthesia um, that's a common thing. I don't know if in this group, if anybody is, you know, it's really, you're not going to see the complications that you, that you one associates with that you did years ago. Um, obviously, depending on how long you're under is a factor. Um, part of it is there's just much better at monitoring equipment now that is used. There's always going to be a, a, an anesthesiologist in there constantly monitoring your, your breathing. Uh, when it's a larger surgery, as a lot of these we're discussing are, you are intubated in your throat. So you're on a controlled breathing situation. Um, you, as, as Bob will always say to people, it's like you have a better uh, chance when you leave in the office of getting hit by a bus or a car than dying under anesthesia. So, yeah. And for a lot of these procedures, you know, there's there's cocktails that they use, and a lot of times propofol is used. Propofol is a wonder drug, so long as somebody's not abusing it, you know, like a Michael Jackson. It is meant as an, an anesthesia drug. Uh, it's and you know, if you've ever gone and you had colonoscopies and things like that, generally they're using propofol because you can bring somebody out and you can bring them right back very quickly. So anyway, that's that on anesthesia. Anybody have any more questions? Is there anything else that they are not telling us? Like, like the thing about that you have to replace your implants after 10 or 15 years? What else don't they tell us? I mean, I tell you to be forewarned is, uh, you know, a good thing. When you're talking about lip enhancement and fillers, your basic candidates are Juvederm and Voluma. Um, they, they are the same thing. They're hyaluronic acid, which is what you're hearing about in all skin creams and things like that. And then and that. you can, so let's say people do enhance lips also with their own fat. Um, that is perfectly acceptable and done. The problem with it is, or the potential problem is it's a little less reliable to do. It's a little less, uh, that being because it can get bumpy. So it's not as smooth as a hyaluronic acid and your body will eat it up ultimately. I mean, that's what happens. It just, you know, it just go, it, it's a normal part of the thing. So when you're using a uh, filler, it's gonna last longer. And if I'm not mistaken here, and I should have it in my note, volume, the Juvederm is what goes in the lips and the Voluma generally would go on cheekbones and stuff like that because the Voluma is just a bit thicker. So that's what, that's the difference in that, but they're basically the same thing. So Valerie, what about these lines that go here? What do they put to these, fill that? These, these are called your nasal labial lines. And these over here, the, the chin are called marionette lines because it looks like a little marionette puppet. Nasal labial or, you know, all in that there, your laugh lines, your, your crow's feet. Um, what you could do here, I mean, I actually just put Voluma in here for my marionette lines because it was looking a little bit like that. So he injected me there about a week ago. <laughs> so, and, uh, and I'm liking that. Uh, and then for here, what they would do is they would probably put a bit of Juvederm in there as well. If one has, you know, a market, I haven't done that. I haven't needed to do that. I would, um, you know, but uh, yeah, but that's a very common procedure. Yeah. And again, that goes by how deep it is or how marked it is of how much you'll need, you know, whether they'll use a quarter of a syringe, a half a syringe, a full syringe, you know, so that's where that, and that's where the pricing differential comes in with all that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just lost okay. you. <laughs> I, I muted myself. <laughs> I should have this button around me more often when I'm in my real life. I would probably keep out of trouble a lot. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we've talked about the boobies. Now let's talk about, I know you had a tummy tuck. Didn't you have a tummy tuck? I did, yeah, I did. A, 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 it was, my, he just lipoed it. I didn't do it, I wish I'd done a full tummy tuck. Um, but I think he'd had enough of me that day. Um, that <laughs> 
the day actually when I did my facelift and he did tuck it a bit. So I've had two C-sections, okay? And what's common with pregnancy and especially if you were C-sectioned is that the, uh, afterward the abdo abdominal wall becomes compromised. That's why some women you'll find, you know, get hernias and things like that because it's just literally a band on you there and it weakens, it actually starts to pull apart in the, in the middle. The middle becomes a little more exposed. So, you know, you can, unless you're super crazy fit and even then when you're super crazy fit, because I've seen people come in that are essentially athletes, they'll still have a weakening in the lower part there. Um, so what they'll do in a tummy tuck, whether it's just the bottom or a full, is they go in, if they need to lipo anything, they lipo anything, and they literally, they stitch into those muscles and, and pull them up and, and strengthen that back together like that. He basically just stitched a little bit on me and, and lipoed in there. I wish he'd stitched more. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, um, but, but you that, know, but wait, Valerie, because I remember that um, when you came to the wedding and it's almost two years ago yeah. and uh, you were looking gorgeous, you had just had your mini face lift and the li liposuction done before you came out and you had a beautiful halter style bathing suit on when we had the beach party and your stomach was flat. And so I, I can't imagine what more you would need. I mean, there's something that's also very sexy about having a little bit of a- Well, of there's a little a, poochie, you know? yeah, so that can be, you can't, especially, you know? And the thing is, it's, it's difficult as you get older too, because you want to be in good shape, this and that. And if you're a, a woman that's always been on the thinner side, that's great, but you don't want to be really, really thin, you know? <laughs> As you're as you're older, if if one is so in that you know in that your body type is in that direction, yeah, right. Because if you're too thin, then your face falls. If you're too thin, there's no fat to fill anything. See, and that's the reason for the fillers is because we do, you know, as we get older, we start to become more drawn, and you know, and that's the whole point of youth is <laughs> more rounded, right? They do that generally when they look at faces, they look at them in the regard of, gen of one is a hollower or a sagger. Okay, so some people tend to hollow more, some don't, they get fuller, or some just sag a bit more. You can have both, but generally a face leans the way it ages is more toward one or the other. And so then that's also going to depend upon the type of, of, if you have surgery or the type of procedure you're going to do, what your face is requiring. Yeah. Hey, Val. Yeah. Okay. Um, Darcy had a question in regards to what was your thoughts on Morpheus 8 laser treatment as an alternative to mini I'm sorry, say it again. The what? Uh, the Morpheus 8 laser treatment as an I alternative. I don't know about a Morpheus 8. I know about O therapy and Morphe. What do they claim it does? <laughs> or what, did, what does it do? Uh, Darcy, if you want to go ahead and unmute. Yeah. I just unmuted myself. Um, it what does it do? It 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 tightens. I mean, the, the idea is that is that it tightens. Um, it, it resurfaces too, I'm sure. And it's the one that it's a combination. It has like lots of little needles, and mm -hmm. it's a combination mm -hmm. of healing and I think radio frequency. Does that make sense? It's a combination. Yes, it does. I know what you're addressing. Good luck with that. <laughs> Good luck with that. You take on that. The problem with that, okay. Sometimes these things work on some people. It's usually the people that don't really need it a lot. You know, um, you have to always ask them about the science behind it and what what is your what do you what are your results? What are your results, doctor, coming back that you're seeing? That's a really good question to ask when it comes to these kind of things and O therapy and vampire facelifts and mama ma. Depending upon the facial need. Uh, there comes a point in any face where there's the big question of, am I going to lift it or not? You know, you can stave things off. You can do a little bit of something and be happy with that and say, stop. And that's fine. You can do nothing and that's fine. But a lot of people spend a lot of money on this stuff. And usually you're required to go back. That's the thing. You're saying that for what it costs, it doesn't really do. It's not. Well, Happen in the end, you're going to end up with somebody like Dr. Ternambi and you're going to get the face flip anyway. You're going to do the That's face usually what happens. He can tell you the people that have been through this that he ends up operating on anyway. So, you know, 
So it's probably, it. but it's still probably good for the resurfacing though, but that's something different. For resurfacing and smoothing, exactly for that. But to actually lift, you're not going to see a big lift. You're not going to see a big lift. Okay. Not, not if one needs a facelift. That's the problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it, it's not a substitute for a facelift. Right. 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 So that's the thing. You can make it look better. You can not, it off. But it's it's just, basically where you want to put your money. Yeah. You know, at all costs. It's where you want to put your money, you know. Yeah. Well, it's it's like it's like you you've got an old car. You're gonna buy new parts for it and fix it up as you go for as long as you're gonna keep this car, and then eventually you're gonna want a new car anyway. Very good analogy. <laughs> Very good analogy. <laughs> I mean, you know, because it's really just putting it off. Yeah. Like for me, I, for example, I'm gonna be. Well, you just stop driving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, you know, I, I always said, oh, when I'm 65, I'm going to have a facelift, you know, and I'm getting close to 65. So like, I'm interested to know these things, you know? Yeah. And I look at myself and I think, well, could I put it off till 70, you know? Uh, and then I look at, but then I also know of uh, people who have done it younger that wish yeah. they had waited. So it's yeah. really uh, a personal choice. I'm sure. Know someone who she had uh, her face lifted, um, her lower face lifted when she was fifty-seven, and no. then she started to see that her eye, you know, it was like now she was kind of out of order, and she said she wished that she knew, you know, she had waited to like do the whole thing because it's sort of like you, you're piecemealing, like you're 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 fixing a car. Which is okay to do. Sometimes what happens is, and I've seen this in the office a, a number of times, is that someone will want to do their lower eyes. And they also really need their upper eyes done. But they kind of hedge off and they get scared. They don't want to do that. Or they're doing a facelift and they'll say, you do, should do a bit in your lowers. I don't want to do that. And what you say to them then is, this is going to look much more pronounced to you after you've done this initial procedure. You know, you're going to, and you're going to want to go back and do it. You know, like that being said, it's it's your personal choice to say, yes, I'm going to do it or not. I'm, I'm not going to do it. But it's just like, ah, for lack of a better analogy, it's like, well, that's a great outfit. You might want to put that belt with it <laughs> or not. And then you're going to go back. Oh, you know what? I need the belt with it. It looks better. You know? Well, yes. And it happens. I'm sure everyone can attest to this because everyone's experienced repainting a, a room. And right. then, you know, Melissa, she's interior designer on here. She's, she, you know, it's like you paint, you go and you paint the room and then you go, oh God, I need to do the trim. Oh, well now I need new curtains. Oh, now I need a new couch. It's like, you know, <laughs> all of a sudden that one painted wall changes everything. Everything. So, hey, but, yeah. Uh, ACM had a a question she had her hand raised up Go ahead. thank you hi um just wondering what is this in the same category as fraxel or how do you feel about that yeah I mean, you can do fraxel lasers and there was also i had i had the uh, ica chemical peel in here and stuff um it depends upon what you're doing it for you want to lose some sunspots that's where like a chemical peel is great for that you can start with a retin-a um depending upon how many or how dark that spot is Fraxel laser is going to be the same kind of thing that it's going to work really well for people that don't need a lot of work. So, you know, if it's minimal, then yeah. Then gotcha. it would, and it's How like, painful is it nowadays? Somebody told me it's not as painful. I mean, uh, um, as well, it was. Well, on what they're giving you. <laughs> um, at the time, and I'm sure like anything else, it's, it, it's got that, that raw burning feeling after because, you know, you're, you're a little burnt, you know, which is that's par for the course, you know, but <laughs> so that's to be expected. Yeah. But Valerie, if you have like a, a lot of us don't have, you know, so I mean, some girls have like full coverage brown spots, but then like, I know I am, am like many that have like some really pronounced yeah. forehead. Uh, what would, is that a retinol thing or is that a Fraxel? Thing? You start with a retin-A. You start with a retin-A and okay. do that, how effective it is. And if it's not getting rid of it enough, then you can do a chemical peel okay and that, and that will you know yeah exactly but you can you know you start slow okay. especially when you're not intensely covered you know yeah is is it okay to just get retin-a over the counter or is there a prescription strength that you should use to use no it's prescription strength there's several strengths on it yeah and you know retin-a also you can use just to get rid of fine lines under eyes um you can do it 
it, you can get an overall uh, nice, uh, smoother appearance of skin. Um, the way that you, you sort of gauge it and depending upon the strength of it, you'll start to get red and flake. And if it starts getting too flaky and, and it gets a bit itchy, then you go to every other day or every third day, you know? Now, that being said, while you're actively using Retin-A, don't be in the sun. <laughs> you can't be in the sun. But yes, I'm always talking about uh, sunblock and the importance of putting it on when you brush your teeth every day. I mean, right now I just have tinted sunblock on. I don't even use makeup anymore, foundation. I just put on tinted sunblock and some of that banana look like Love it. I just ordered some more. I know, right? Um, and uh, by the way, everyone, next month I'll be doing a whole thing on just makeup. Now, Valerie, I just want to uh, tell you, we have Brooke online to, with us today. Yeah, Brooke, why aren't you showing your face? Come on. So Brooke wa uh, wants to know if you can talk about what's called a deep plane lift. Okay, yes, deep plane. All right. Deep plane is a legitimate facelift. Um, I know a whole group of plastic surgeons that don't really like doing them. Uh, reason being, you, you you, it's a much larger risk of nerve damage, okay? When one goes in there for a facelift, okay, I, you know, I don't want to freak you all out and stuff, but um, they do, they lift this up huh? and they have to go in there and they're tightening those muscles, right? Deep plane means they're going in there a lot deeper, uh, which is not really that necessary. And you can end up with facial nerve paralysis. All right. And that's the big fear about it. And because deep plane right now is one of those, you know, favorite kids on the block of the moment. Um, and people tend to also charge more for deep plane facelift. That's the other thing. Yeah. You know, there's a guy, I can't name him, uh, that is known for now the $100,000 facelift in New York City. Uh, he's not doing anything different from anybody else, but he's got really good PR. Um, and I, I mean, I know how he operates and I know what goes on in his office. And, you know, it's anesthesiologists and everybody works with, with you know, when everybody, plastic surgeons have their own accredited operating room suite, they, they're overseen by the government. They, you know, they get evaluated every year, blah, blah, blah. And so there's a whole world of people out there of nurse practitioners, anesthetists, anesthesiologists, OR techs, da, da, da. They tend to work in these consortiums, you know, so everybody gets, you know, yeah. So, um the deep plane is, it's just, it's not necessary, you know? And generally people with a lot of experience don't really want to deal with that because it's not worth the potential complication, which can really mess up somebody's face. You know, you're like, like looking like you had a stroke. Yo, let's yeah. not do that. Okay, yeah. Brooke, does that, do you have any more questions about that, Brooke? Do you have any, Brooke, are you there? She might've gotten scared. No, 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 I just, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. but I can't yes. see you, but I can hear you. I don't want to be seen at this moment, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, Valerie, you, you hit it spot on. I've been reading a lot of it, and there is this one New York City doctor that um, I see all the time, and it seems like he he's doing a deep plane lift on everybody. And so yeah, I really- If that's his go-to. Yeah, so I appreciate the fact that you broke it down to, from like a surgical standpoint, yeah. so that, you know, it- as, and also the breakdown of the necessity and the cost and the risk. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was great. Thank you. You cleared up a lot of question for me. Thank you. That's why yes. I'm here. Yes, exactly. And like, <laughs> like I said, you know, what are they not telling us? And that's why, Valerie, this is so important what you're doing. Because yeah. you have hands-on experience from both sides of the, uh, the the conversation, you've been under the knife, and you've been on the other side of it, and you've been there witnessing women who come, women and men. Let's talk about the men a little bit. Talk about men. We didn't talk about the men. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about guys. Men get a lot of procedures. <laughs> you know, men get a lot of stuff. Men get uh, men love lipo. Men love facelifts. Men love Botox. Men love that. Men get their eyes done all very often. Um, 
Other things that men deal not that interested in, or maybe is there's a thing called gynomastia, men boobs. There's a lot of men boobs out there. So they get their boobs, you know, so they, they lipo it out and lift it, yeah. So that they don't have men boobs. Oh, so that they don't look like they're having saggy boobs? Like it, yeah, they actually, awesome. there's like man boobs. There are some guys out there cursed with man, real man boobs. I mean, it's unbelievable, you know, yeah. So wait, so when they have that, what do they do? How do they re remedy that? They will gently, they light bow it out and they'll lift it up and make it a flatter, make it just like what one would, a man's chest would be without having boobs. They still retain their nipples, you know, right. they still keep their nipples. Yeah. What about ball tucks? <laughs> Ball tucks? I mean, bald heads? What are you talking about? No, balls. Balls? <laughs> oh, well, I can't spin. My husband does not do balls. <laughs> there, I, there, I got what you must call the, the scrotum lift. I, I don't know. I cannot do it. I've never seen it. I don't want to see it. I don't does it exist, though? I mean, is I it a thing? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I've never <laughs> but on all of the journal clubs and the you know meetings that I've heard and MoMA and 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 <laughs> meetings that I've done I haven't heard anybody talking about balls <laughs> wait is the doctor in the house I want his opinion I know he's not I wish he were he's not I was like come on like, <laughs> well He's not going to want to talk about balls either. <laughs> I don't think he wants to operate on balls. Well, let, I mean, come on. Come on. Let's face it. Women's boobs. I mean, gravity oh, yeah. gravity yeah. hits everything and everything. I'm sure somebody does it. I'm sure there's a whole world of people that do it out there. <laughs> well. I haven't met them. Okay. Well, um, ask Dr. T. Uh, I know. I said, no, I'm. I, I'm just. I can see the face. You'll be like, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving down the body. So we okay. now, where are we? We talked about the tummy tucks, and then, and then, oh, you mentioned buttocks. What? That's another fashion <laughs> statement. Oh, what the BBL? Okay, Bill. So we'll talk about BBL, Brazilian butt lift, and liposuction too. So Brazilian butt lift became really popular. Um, <laughs> he's done a number of them. Uh, it's not his favorite procedure. He's also corrected so many botched procedures of Brazilian butt. Lift. So there's Miami is a wild west of plastic surgery and a wild west of Brazilian butt lift. So are some of the Caribbean islands. People love to go away and get their plastic surgery cheaper and come back with horrible complications, infections. I mean, physical deformities. It's just it's grotesque and he's corrected a lot of them you know sometimes it's to as best you can because sometimes the deformity can't be completely when i say deformity what can happen in brazilian butlers you'll see they'll they'll be that but there'll be horrible indentions okay and when there have been infections there they actually get necrotic skin and they've lost some skin there and it's just it's really disturbing so but, you know, done right, done well, if that's the look you want, you know, um, and it depends how big you want to go, you know, like he's not going to make a really huge arse on someone, but um, yeah, he's done a number of them. So, I mean, they're out there. I personally that, don't want that. <laughs> me either. But, the, uh, but that also became a trend and a fashion oh. thing, right? Because of the Kardashians, correct? Absolutely. 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 I mean, uh, Lopez, yeah, between those two, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, the whole trend before that was really, women couldn't get their asses small enough. You know, it was always the the, 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 the struggle for that. You know, unless you have a little tiny rear, which many women do, God bless. But you know, um, yeah, that became definitely a fad trend. And you know what? That fad trend will be around for however long, and then it'll fade. Yeah, it'll yeah. fade. Well, exactly. Body uh, images do fade. change over the years i mean when you look back Absolutely. at the pre raphaelite models and the you know the, yeah. the voluptuous round beautiful women and that was 
that was the way that women were that that the uh, people saw beauty at the time, and then it became you know it became wafy skinny during the Twiggy days, and a lot of it really has to do with fashion and uh, and trends of the times. And then you look at the at the era with Marilyn Monroe when they were yeah. roundish and curved, and and so that's kind of what we're going through here now. And I think that the the most important thing to remember is that you know we are so lucky to have our bodies it's really about taking care of them can mm -hmm. we make them better through exercise and and things like this i mean when you talk about bodies let's talk about these angel wings like should uh, i be bothered that i have angel wings i they're hate them flapping. <laughs> they're flapping but you know do i really care maybe not maybe i just wear a longer sleeve shirt i don't know but do people, people come care to they do a procedure on it. Yeah. It so tell, tell us about that. Well, sometimes what happens <laughs> is so after people have a major weight loss, um, they're left with, they're actually, I love that you call them angel wings. They're actually referred to as bat wings. <laughs> angel wings sounds a lot nicer. <laughs> um, they can be really, uh, remark that they'll, they'll have, they can hang really, really low. So again, that's another procedure that they, they actually cut in that will also always, you'll always have a scar. Scars usually in here on the inside. They actually cut in, they cut out skin and they lift it and tighten it. They actually take away skin because it's all excess skin. That's all that it point. is. It's all it, it is. It's excess skin. Yeah. So, and there's, you know, there's, uh, there's body lifts for, again, going back to people who have had major weight loss, you know, however they've done it, whether they've done it themselves or they've had, you know, a, a band or whatever. Um, they, when there's major weight loss, I mean, then the stomach will then hang down over the pubic bone and things like that. So that gets lifted up and, you know, they want to be happy in their new bodies because they've made a real commitment to being a better, healthier self, right. you know? So that's, that's actually, those are the kind of procedures that for someone like him and many people really love doing because, you know, it's, it, they're, the, the, per, the patient's coming at it from a very different angle in their, in their mentality, you know, and in their being. So it's, it's a different vibe to the surgery, even though some of it's the same exact procedures, you know. So then if you uh, want to go to the hospital, okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's a great thing. Does yeah. someone have a question? No. No, no, no. That was me. Sorry, I was. Right. I interrupted That's you. And I didn't. Mean great to. thing. Um, it's like anything. You can always have complications with liposuction. When you hear about horrific complications with liposuction or death. That's because they went. They did too many errors at once. They went in and they took way too much fat out. And because what they do is they actually inject in a lot of fluid before they start putting in these, the things that are, they're called cannulas, that they go in and they basically vacuum. Lipoing a person uh, can be really, it's a workout for them, right? <laughs> it is. Um, if they have a fair amount of, like a normal to fair amount of fat in there, say it's for a tummy, it's, you never really want to see the procedure. I've seen it many times. They actually are in there like this. So it's very vigorous for them, you know? It's like, he'll come home sometimes and be like, oh, I back kills from this lipo today, you know? Um, yeah. But uh, usually, so those horrific complications are, they're, they're a result of that. So liposuction is not a weight loss tool. It, you know, you are going to lose weight. With it. It's meant to refine areas of that, of, of what you want. If you're doing your outer thighs, inner thighs, tummy, arm, whatever you may want, around the knee even, um, it's meant to re-sculpt those areas. Sometimes women just have, we've all seen women who have really marked saddlebags on the side. That is almost like a genetic, uh, it's, it is genetic. It can almost be a defect. They can lose a lot of weight and they'll never lose that saddlebag. So case in point, liposuction is perfect for that female or that male, depending upon when he wants it. Yeah. Okay, so let me just do a check-in here, everybody. Yeah. Here. I hope everyone's enjoying this. If you're enjoying this, go to your chat and put a thumbs up for us because we are now at 3.06. Now, I'm okay to go on. We can go till 3.30 if you have time, Valerie. If anybody needs to leave, that's okay too. But shall we continue? Because I don't think we're done. <laughs> I'm fine. So it's just depending okay. on any time. So um, with that in mind, um, and we got some thumbs up and some people saying I'll be reaching. I, but out. I have to go. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. You too. Thanks for this. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being here. And I like your. Uh... Hi. 
Oh, well, my son's, yeah, my son's wall. Like, <laughs> during the pandemic, yeah, he graffiti. There's some all kind. There's all kinds of profanity written on that wall. But anyway, we'll, we'll blur the background. <laughs> no, but Audrey Hepburn is there, and that's all. Oh we yes, know. exactly. Yeah, he loves that's it. Anyway, bye, bye, ladies. Bye. Bye. Um, I had a question, um, and I I asked it earlier, and I think it got overlooked with all the what? in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you um asked it already, but go ahead. Um, can you talk a little bit? About, I have an upcoming procedure on June 19th with Dr. Ternambe, mm -hmm. and um, I'd like just for everyone's edification and maybe to listen, hear from other people on the call as well, uh, what can you expect in terms of pain, and is there anything that you can do prior um, or during, uh, you know, prior to the operation and during recovery to mm -hmm. alleviate the pain? So again, this is dependent upon the procedure that you're having, okay? Um, I will tell you that it's if you're doing anything that's facial or even anything that's going to bruise, it is always a good idea to start taking some Arnica mm -hmm. before the procedure. You know, you can go to the store, help the store, and you get the little Arnica, the pearls, but it's start good because it will help decrease your, your bruising. Afterwards, you can also use Arnica cream on the areas. They'll tell you, not immediately after the procedure, but they'll tell you when you can start putting an Arnica cream on it. Um, as a rule of thumb, he really, his protocol now is non-opioid uh, for the obvious reasons. The, the, there's an enormous opioid epidemic going on in this country, more than, I mean, we all realize it more than you can even imagine. Um, so what he does generally is a protocol. He uses gabapentin, which is a nerve blocker with a super Tylenol. And you start on that, it's several days before, and you continue that through until after. Um, in some cases, if there is some, you know, i.e. like the wife, and I'll tell you why I then said, I need the opioid. Um, but generally that, and I'll, I'll address it. Generally that it works just fine and that's, that's the protocol. That being said, you know, you're always going to have some discomfort and, you know, it's surgery. It's not, it is not a cakewalk. It is not getting your hair done. So there is going to be discomfort um, and some possible pain, depending, you know, if you're having a tummy tuck, you're going to have tummy pain after, you know, it's going to be, you're going to be really, really sore. I mean, there's going to be stuff like that. That's, that's unavoidable. That's part of surgery. Um, should it be mind numbing pain after? No, absolutely not. No, not. The other reason on the opioids, uh, lesser level two, is that, um, and I'm sure everybody's taken an opioid here and there, whatever. Constipation is, I mean, I'm amazed that there is this epidemic. I'm convinced that everybody's out there constipated and miserable because <laughs> constipation with opioids is common, especially if you're taking, you know, a few days and up. Um, you know, and yes, generally you can be given a stool softener with that, and then but it's a very common, so unpleasant side effect. You know, so yeah, that being so, from why I did why I asked for the opioids, okay. I have TMJ, which I'm sure most of you realize what that is temporal mandibular joint pain. Da, da, da. <clears throat> it hadn't really bothered me. It comes and goes, it hasn't bothered me in a long time. Uh, when I was intubated with my facelift surgery, it my jaw just decided it was not having it afterwards. I didn't know. And I was like, oh my God. And it was, it was really bad. I endured it for two days. And this I didn't have anything to do with the actual face lift. This was just from being intubated. Um, and I wasn't feeling anything from the face lift. I was like, I said, I can't. I said, you need, I need an opioid for like two days just to blow this cycle out. And that's what I did. And it was done after two days. Um, so, you know, there are times opioids, yes, they are in place and they are, they should be used. You know, I had a knee surgery, I took some opioids, I mean, yes. But generally you don't, that's not his protocol, it can be avoided, so. Thank you, thank you. Sure. Okay, now I can click. Anything else? We lost Lorelai. Are Oops. you in? Are you in there somewhere, Lorelai? I, I muted myself, so I, I love that mute button. I know I keep forgetting <laughs> to unmute. Anyway, yeah, um, no, it, it the oh the thing is that they're also uh, addictive, so you don't well, yeah. want to overdo it. No, you're very addictive. So the only other the only part of my body that I really have trouble that I have a hard time with is when I go to do yoga and then I do the down dog and I look at my knees and my thighs and everything's falling down. Yeah, I know. I, I don't like my knees. <laughs> but, 
but I mean, but I feel like I, I if I were going to lift anything, it would be like lifting like right, uh, uh, like my thigh, my thighs. Yeah. That's called a thigh lift. It's, it's done a lot. <laughs> Seriously. A oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a thigh lift. It's done a lot. Um, I know men and women that have done thigh, some, uh, patients. Um, memory serves correctly. The, the scars on the inside of the thigh. It's on the inside of the thigh and they go in and they just literally pull that skin off. That's what it is. Yeah. So, because, you know, most of our knees get a little. In the front. <laughs> so would you, uh, would you think that someone like Cher has done like all these body parts and all these things to stay uh, as young looking as she does for her age? And Cher's done a lot. She's done a lot. And, you know, I mean, with all due respect, Cher is a born and bred LA girl and she's been an entertainment industry girl her whole life, pretty much. So you know, she is of that mindset and she share, you know, and I think especially for a lot of her fan base, they don't want Cher to be old. They don't want Cher to age. I I was always like the biggest Cher fan on the planet. I still am. But what I find ironic is that she actually had, she was so beautiful. She had such an amazing face that that face would have aged really well on its own or with minimal, you know, uh, intervention. It really would. She, her lips are one of the things I have the biggest problem with because she actually has an implant in that lip there. It bothers me. She did it in an arc of time where they were actually putting in Gore-Tex. I don't know if that's what she had or cadaver. They will actually put in part of a cadaver's lip. So yeah, um, I can't say definitively. I don't know exactly what she has in there, but you can see a line and a demarcation. But again, I guess she likes it because she's just kept it. Yeah. Well, she still looks like Cher, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What about Madonna though? Madonna doesn't look like Madonna. Anymore. Madonna's scary. Okay, I'm sorry. I can't I love Madonna, but it's like, oof. There is an extraordinary amount of filler in that face. Um, which is why she looks so puffed. She almost looks like she's on steroids, quite frankly, because they get what is called a moon face. I I mean, I have no idea. If she's on something else, doing something else, is she having a medical issue? I don't know, but uh, I I know when she was injecting a lot, I know who was doing it and she was obviously requesting it. Um, and then now it seems to have gone to a completely other level on her. So I don't know what to say about that. And another one who had an amazing face that, you know, less is more, <laughs> less is more. <laughs> yes. And I think, you know, at the end of this whole conversation, I mean, really what I've gleaned from you, Valerie, is that, you know, it's everything, it's all a personal choice and, uh, and to that, you know, less is more pretty much really covers it because yeah. it also, the idea of making these changes on yourself, then you start to see yourself a new way and then you be can become addicted to, yeah. a person can become addicted to the process of of plastic surgery right Absolutely. and so somebody like madonna or Cher or you know dolly parton for example i mean dolly yeah. parton seems to have good work done somehow uh you know but she admits it and she knows that's who she right. is you know that that's kind of part of her 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 personality persona yes but i think for the rest of us who are living you know normal lives we just want to look the best that we can yeah. No, we don't have to overdo it and to start I would say like you did you know you start small so yeah. that you can build up to it I think that it's you did the right thing by going in and starting with the mini and you know then doing the eyes you know so that you could just go through the process slowly yeah and you know again it's everybody it's you know, it is safer as well yes and everybody's different. Everybody's desires are different. But I still hearken back to, I think it's really about you want to be your best self. And your best self encompasses a lot more than just plastic surgery. But since this is the forum on it, when it you know, to that point, um, personally, you just want to look refreshed. Uh, you want to look not angry all the time or tired all the time or, you know, whatever really bothers you. And I don't, you know... God willing, I'm only going to go one way and get older. So, you know, um, I don't mind having a bit of age on my face. I just didn't want to look sagged out and tired. And um, 
but I don't want to become a person ever that looks like completely operated on, you know, and I, I, I wouldn't do that. And he would never, he wouldn't go there. So, you know, but that's okay. Well, ho hopefully he'll have time to retire before that day comes. And yeah, you know, the and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, and you know, you started out being very beautiful, exceptional. Well, beautiful. Way kind. <laughs> so it's easy to work on your face because well, you're beautiful to begin with. Oh, and thank I'm you. That's really super, super kind. <laughs> Well, and you know, he looks at a lot of women, let's face it. He married oh, yeah. you. Yeah. He married he's you. a lot of everything. <laughs> Faces and all the rest, you know. Yeah. All right. So Valerie, um, uh, do you want to show us his book? Yeah, sure. It's right here. So you can get this on Amazon only as an ebook. It is a very interesting read, and it was before his before its time, unfortunately. So it is called the Beauty Quotient Formula, and this is addressing, from a plastic surgeon's point of view, how you can be the best you. And sometimes that means saying no to procedures or really questioning yourself and being very confident in your choice of procedures, as what we were talking about today knowing what you're getting into, uh, knowing what to ask when you're interviewing people. So it's a very lovely and good read. It's a great summertime read. <laughs> and it'll be really informative for you. The Beauty Quotient Formula by Dr. Robert. So, yeah. And it's... I, I just put it over there in the chat if anybody wants to copy it. Yeah. The typo. Uh, so it's Dr. Robert, not DT Robert. <laughs> no, Robert. Them, and yeah. then also, Valerie, while we're while we have you here, um, mm -hmm. you were telling me that you were going to be starting a vlog. And so what's coming up? Yeah. So I'm not completely, unfortunately, organized enough yet, but I am. I want to start a vlog and I'm going to call it Plastic Surgeon Waif, I Need Wife. Um, and basically, I'm going to be covering a lot of things like this that we've done. I'm going to be talking about makeup. I'm going to be talking about things you can do post-surgical for makeup, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and go into different procedures, blah, 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 have forms where it's about men. Uh, talk about some of the disasters that you see and why they are the disasters that you see and that they didn't, they need not have been, you know? Well, I, I think that you said it, you know, trying to get more bang for your buck is not where you want to be going when yeah. you're messing with your face and your body. You and, you know, what's going on on the other side of plastic surgery as well. So as you were referencing earlier about what are we not being told with, da, 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 da. That's part of that is really the patient's responsibility. Part of that is the surgeon's responsibility. So, you know, it's a two way street. Yeah. What well, I think of, what part of New York is, is Dr. T uh, located at? He's, well, I'm sorry, say that again. What part of New York is he in? Yes. Yeah. He's, we're in Manhattan and he's, uh, he's his address is 815 Park Avenue. And the practice is known as Madison Plastic Surgery. Madison yeah. surgery in NYC. Yeah. Just look that up. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah. cool. Well, we're getting down to the bottom yeah. line, you guys. I wanted to, I just want to thank you all for coming, Valerie. That was really fun. You're just thank you for inviting me. I hope this helped. And I hope I was able to enlighten and answer some questions. A lot. You are yeah. very lightning and you know a lot and um and then i just want to say for everybody that's here um uh when it comes down to products i'm your avon lady i've yeah. been the avon. love it i use the a new and the ultimate on my face the night cream the day cream and the eye cream i've been using it since i was about 30 years old when i mm -hmm. When, right after I'd moved back to New York. So I've been using it for over 30 years. So I, I believe in it. And you were talking about hydro, hydro hyaluronic acid. Well, they were the first ones to come out with alpha hydroxy. Did you know that? And, alpha and I did not. But yeah, it's interesting. The hyaluronic acid thing, I mean, on as a topical it's it doesn't really do a ton as a topical it's hard you just you need a lot of it <laughs> you know you need a lot of it but again this harkens back to what's being sold and what is the sort of you know favorite flavor of the of the time and um 
everybody's skin is of course different. Um, nobody you cannot moisturize enough, especially as you get older, unless you have incredibly oily skin, but that really is keeping your skin clean, keeping it sunscreened, taking care of it. Yes, I think there are some uh, products that are better than others, but generally I think you're okay to use anything that your skin doesn't have a bad reaction to. Valerie, what do you think the most um, moisturizing cream is? I'm, I'm having some skin issues because I was doing chemo and it's so dry. And I, I just keep on yeah. putting lotion after lotion, after oil, after heavy cream. And I can't find anything that feels like it moisturizes it enough. That it's really getting in there enough. It's hard. I mean, I, the problem, have you tried even going to like a cocoa butter without completely not breaking out from it? Well, that's my other issue is I think a lot of my, you know, I mean, it's not bad now, but when I was younger, I did have, you know, kind of acne problems right. and as a lot of the things, I can't tell if it's the rash or if it's the product that I'm using, that's really causing some problems again, but you know, I, I'm, I'm really sensitive, so I can't have anything with yeah. any kind of perfume. I mean, or depending upon how far you are out of chemo, it can still be, obviously, if you still have some of the chemo in your system, then yeah, there's, there's it's hard because the skin does react to it for sure. You know, yeah. um, if you, and, and I would say you have to probably up with the most emollient thing that you can find, but again, you're going to have to know when to call it on that. If you start breaking out from it and, you right. know, well, last month we had, uh, Helen on Helen mm -hmm. Colin and she just couldn't say enough about the Palmer's coconut butter and the coconut butter. And I went online and I ordered all kinds of it. I ordered their yep. Suntown, I, you know, because I wanted to try it out. I mean, you can pick it up in Target or Walgreens, yep. you know, but they've got the cocoa butter. They've got, and then, then they've got one that's mixed with an, a vitamin E and it's an oil, uh, Melissa. I don't know if you've tried that, mm -mm. Uh, but you can buy small versions of it. So you don't have to spend a ton of money. It's not expensive to begin with. That way, if it doesn't work for you, you know, you haven't spent your wad on it you know right did you like it did you like it Lorelai? I like it I got a big tub of the coconut butter I keep it right by the toilet and when I'm sitting there and the, I just I put it on my hands and, it I is good. It's, it's and, I remember, and I've been putting it in my nail beds and my nails are growing yeah. I like the way it smells I love the way it smells yeah. yeah. And that's like, you know, the stuff our, you know, Helen was going on about it. Her grandmother used it. Her great grandmother yep. used it. She says she has it all over the house. Her, she puts it on her kids. She gives it to Phil now because he would go on stage and put this body oil and then he would break out in rashes. So she got him Love the it. oil and he's been using that now because you know how he likes to look all shiny on stage. <laughs> he's buff. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, that was like really uh, something That's I cool. I remember living in New York and we had a um, a, a, a guy that worked uh, the concierge and he was a black man who had been a boxer. Uh -huh. and he told me that boxers use coconut oil for bruising, going back to the bruising. Wow. Yeah. Butter, not oil. Coconut right. butter. butter. And that they would put that on. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Because it draws, it would draw out the colors. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you've got the allergies going. I've got the allergies going because oh. I'm in Florida and I'm not used to it. Zyrtec, 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 if it helps you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Does anybody have any last uh, questions they want to ask or Anything you anything else you can think of, uh, Valerie, at the end of it? No, I think we've pretty much covered it. Um, I if anybody has any questions, you can absolutely, you know, that you think of after you feel free to reach out, call the office. I'll talk to you. Diana can also talk to you as our office manager. Um, and she's a lovely gal. So if there's what's any the what's the phone number? I'll put it in the chat. Okay, really. the phone number is 212-628. Seven six zero zero. Yeah. So, if you have any thoughts after that, yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, Melissa was saying how dry her skin is. I have the other problem. My skin is really, really, extremely oily. 
Mm -hmm. What can I use to get rid of a shiny forehead? Well, I will tell for me, washy, I, my skin is, is, is combination middle of the road, basically. Okay. But what I have always used since I was like 14 is a buff pop. I don't know if you even know what that is. Everyone knows about loofahs. Okay. You can find them online. I also use a tea tree oil, so liquid soap on my face. So uh, the buff pop, you can go online. It's actually B-U-F-P-U-F, that buff pop. Um, they're, they're, they are, they're man-made and they exfoliate your skin very gently, da, 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 da. that will help take off that initial slick of oil there. Um, I would then definitely use a, a, a spritz of like, whether it's going to be a rose spritz or something like that. And the, I can't, because I'm not oily, I can't tell you the lightest cream to use, but you may not even need to use cream on your whole face. You may just want to get something to just dab around your eyes, you know? Thank you. Yeah. Sure. You'll like being oily when you get older because it makes yeah. you have fewer wrinkles. Well, I'm 52 and I'm finding now my skin as I'm getting older, going through menopause, it's getting oilier and oilier as I'm getting older. Yeah. Well, I would definitely try the buff pop and try something like a tea tree oil because it is okay. emollient and it does, and it, it really cleans off the skin. Yeah. And so I'm really finding too, the products I used when I was in my 20s it's not doing it in my 50s yes yeah, skin changes you know yeah. menopause changes skin big yeah. time big time yeah that would be a good topic for a future um yeah for a future episode that's in your spot on right <laughs> <laughs> uh, another question um i live in a very small city uh of about a hundred thousand people so my options are very limited when it comes to looking for a plastic surgeon mm -hmm. what specific questions should i ask um, well, it would depend upon what you're asking about, you know, okay. what, what procedure or what you, you may not even be able to address what the procedure is, but what your, what you feel your desired, uh, desire is what your issue is, if you wanted to say that. So if it was, you know, if you wanted to have your upper eyes done, blah, 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 anything like that, you would ask them, how many of these have you done? Mm -hmm. Uh, do you generally see comp number one, are you a board certified plastic surgeon? Okay. How many of these procedures have you done? Uh, what are your results generally? Have how many complications have you had? And you should be able to see photographs of before and okay. after. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Both of you are beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Oh, you're way kind. Thank you. <laughs> uh, give give Gladys a belly rub for me. Oh, you know what? Where is Gladys? <laughs> <laughs> I have an eight week old puppy that just came home last night. So. <laughs> Give her a belly rub for me. Thank you I so will, much. I will. I will. <laughs> well, Valerie, just be glad she's not a Sharpay. Then we'd be really talking. I wanted, I don't know where she is. I wanted to hold her up and say, see, this is a face that needs plastic surgery. And she'll never have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, let's sign off. We, this, was, okay. this was great. And we do have a lovely community going here. So I hope you guys will stay tuned and we'll do this again next month. And uh, if you want to follow Valerie, she's on Instagram under Valerie Tornambi. Val Tornambi, and, yes. And so, and then if you look over in the chat boxes, there's a couple of links. There's phone numbers. Just copy paste those somewhere uh, so you so that you can refer to those there. You can go on there. Absolutely, you can see procedures before and afters priceless, blah, 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 what procedures are, what procedures are offered, et cetera. Yeah, that's all on the website. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you so much, Valerie. Thank you so much. Thanks, yeah. It was, it was really fun. Thanks for joining, Melissa. Thank you, Cindy, for being there in the background, taking care of things. Nancy, for your questions. Aaron, who else is still left? Brooke, are you still there? just a few of us left people so an hour is good because people don't have all day but yeah exactly so grateful that you all showed up yeah so, all right. love you ciao 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 bye-bye blinded by fashion blinded by fashion the fashionista everybody